people still prefer newer buildings. It doesn't seem like it's suddenly weakening or fracturing. How they performed in the last couple of years. We've delved into that and we look at this and we're on the ground. If you are a potential buyer in the Brickell downtown or Edgewater market, or maybe you are a current owner in Brickell downtown or Edgewater and are thinking about should you be keeping your unit or should you be selling it? This is a must watch video for you. I'm standing here with Shakira Sanchez. She is our territory manager for Brickell Downtown and Edgewater. And this all started because we were looking at the rental in the market and we were considering what was the sustainability of what had happened to the rent over the last couple of years. And if you look on the screen, you'll see how the rent went up. And we thought maybe that's not sustainable. Maybe it can't keep going up like this. Maybe it has to correct because the income levels against the value of the real estate was such that it was getting out of hand and that the rental market was actually following suit. However, to some degree, we're actually wrong. And we did our research and you did the research, and we're gonna share that with you right now. So the most important thing about this is obviously to get as granular as possible, because something that we found out is that this general rule doesn't apply to every single unit or building. But for the most part, the rental market is still very strong, which is a very good vital sign for how strong this market truly is. But we have to keep in mind, we have tons of new construction product coming over in the next couple of years. And truthfully, the moment is right now to see if your unit will be able to still capitalize while it still can, and how will it perform against the other ones. We've seen some units appreciate as little as 0.2% all the way up to 16%. So it truthfully depends on the unit, on the building, but for the most part, we're seeing that people still prefer newer buildings, highly amenitized buildings. Now, of course, there are people who love older buildings right on the water, like Brickle Key is a wonderful example, but we realized that a three bedroom unit in the last year for Carbonell actually fell about 30% in the price. And that is an example of, a, of what's considered a well-respected older building. So this isn't a bad building by any stretch of the imagination. This is a well-respected, good performing, nicely uh, managed and actually manageable HOA feed yes. building. It's just older. Um, on the other side, we're actually standing here in 1010 yeah. and we saw one unit. Again, you've got to be aware. And I'd just like to say, please, 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 if you own a unit, pick up the phone and call us. Information below. We will individually analyze the unit that you own to tell you whether or not your rental return does and should match what your value of your asset is. Now, very quickly, why don't we flash up on the screen so you guys can do quick math, a working example of what a good return should be. And again, let's go through it. It's We've always said 6,000 per month per $1 million of asset value, or if you wanna be very simple about it, 600 a month for every $100,000 of value. So, we have an example of a rent that may be considered an outlier, that market value, the last one sold for around 1.7, but the rental return that this owner is currently getting, we're standing in, in a corner of a three bedroom in this building yeah. in the same unit, is now down to $7,000 a month or $7,500 a month for another one. That is not considered a good return on investment. Now that might be an outlier, but there are outliers out there. And so that return obviously isn't balancing. Why? Let's take off the value of the asset at 1.7. Let's now deduct for that owner the insurance premiums that are covered through your HOA and your annual taxes. And then now let's look at the cap rate that that owner would be getting. In this instance, it's about 2.5%. So that led us to believe, oh, we have a problem here. But in other research, as you put it, 16% yeah. up for so many of the other three bedroom units on the market. And it doesn't seem to be softening. It doesn't seem like it's suddenly weakening or fracturing systematically right. through the brick on market. But there are exceptions to that rule. The floor plan needs to be functional through and through. I mean, we've seen, for example, in Carbonell, which as you mentioned, is a phenomenal building, but a three bedroom at Carbonell is around 1900 square feet. Here, we're in 1010 Burkle in a 01 line, and this is about almost 1,800 square feet. But it's a three bedroom plus a den, and of course, you can't compete with the age of the building. So everyone has their preferences, but we're seeing in a lot of new construction that's gonna be delivering in the next couple of years, yep. a one bedroom plus den is much larger, or a two bedroom or a three bedroom are 
north of 2,000 and 3,000 square feet. Yeah, this begs the question, and we had, we've been through the cycles. We've been doing this since 2007. We've seen the ups and we've seen the downs. We saw the crash of 08. We saw corrections during 2015, where the market got flooded with product. The interesting thing is this time round, as a new product comes into the system, a lot of it's coming well over $2,000 a square foot. So it's not necessarily indirect competition to some of these buildings, but there are buildings that it will be in direct competition with. And if you are in one of those buildings, and we will tell you which ones those are, then you do probably want to consider talking to us and considering your timing, because supply and demand is the fundamentals. We just came off the back of doing a great podcast with the head of finance and economics at FIU, who actually taught you yeah. uh, many, a few years ago, I yeah. say how many, a few years ago. <laughs> And he actually has looked, and please do watch that podcast, because this is not half-baked opinions of people who just don't understand economics. FIU is the number one research college in the world for real estate and economics at this level. And he is the head of that. And so we've delved into that and we look at this and we're on the ground studying this. So make a good decision make a rational decision, make a calculated decision, and consider that the timing might or might not be now. And again, for buyers, you want to understand the right returns and the long-term view of your investment. Definitely, and we invite you to reach out to us, to our team. In reality, you have to see what the rental rates are now, how they've performed in the last couple of years, but more importantly, how will it compare with other new construction products in Brickell, downtown Edgewater, and really all throughout Miami. And we'd like to leave you with two softwares to use on our website. Obviously, the market statistics page, which will allow you to look at the historical sales going back the last three months and beyond. And of course, Condo Geeks, which will give you a much broader horizon and timeline for the economic cycle for all those buildings that exist, not just in Brickell, downtown and Edgewater, but the whole of Miami. The takeaway is at the end of the day, Brickell is actually doing very, very well. The wheels are not falling off, the market is still strong, there is overall seems to be a lack of inventory and the rental numbers seem to be supported by the income levels and they're not softening an awful lot, if right. at all. But there are exceptions, so let us help you. Thank you for watching. And as always, see our information below and give us a call.